So I just rolled in. We got a ton of merchandise. I filled up one of our vehicles and I may even go back and pick up some more. Now I picked up a whole bunch. Now this came from a business that's been shut down for a long time. I was able to get in there. I was able to buy some of the stuff that's been sitting in there forever, just gaining dust. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at a big, huge, massive purchase that we made of a ton of paper items. Uh, geez, I got magazines, comics, I got some slides, thousands of postcards, unsorted through or anything else like that. Now, these were purchased from someone that pretty much went out of business years back. They're getting up there in age. These have been sitting there for years and years gathering dust so they just wanted to get some money out of them didn't want to burden anybody else with this so we have been buying large chunks of inventory from them mostly i fill up a van or so throw out a price and off i go is usually what we do on these now i didn't pay a fortune for these i may have five or ten cents into most of these but i bought them in bulk now i didn't dig through these like i normally would i took a shot on them the price was dirt cheap i just kind of glanced through what was here Looks like good material. I've bought stuff from them before, and I've always done extremely well. At this point, they just want to eliminate as much of this as they can. And we're talking a huge warehouse full of all types of stuff like this. Now, I love magazines. I can usually get them for pennies if I buy them in mass bulk. I never pay more than a dollar a piece unless there's something really primo or it's some tough negotiations here. Now, I bought a bunch, a couple hundred, of just National Lampoon's magazine bunches and bunches of these all dating back to the early 70s overall they're all basically 70s in there you can sell most issues for 15 or 20 bucks in all honesty and some go for some phenomenal money this one does have a label on it in a future video i'll show you how to simply easily get that off without doing any harm or even really touching the cover so uh, if you want to see that hang on for a video coming out in the very quick future here uh, but again, these are excellent to get. Now, Major Artists did some of the covers. This is a Frazetta cover right here. A Frazetta cover is 30 or so bucks, pretty much bare bones minimum for any ones that I get. You have to advertise it. You have to put that in the title. If it's mocking something, you want to put the name of whatever it's mocking in there as well. Now, this one's pretty cool, too. I remember this one. I probably have a couple copies of that in this lot, too. I don't mind buying multiples of the same one. This is a 3D one with Stevie Wonder in here, which is kind of ironic. And it actually has the 3D glasses and the actual, somewhere in here, the actual um, sheet they came off of. Now, there's even 3D ads in it. So this is a Doobie Brothers record ad. Some of the ads can be worth money. So if some of these magazines were trashed out, a 3D ad for a record would be awesome. Lots of good content in here. Large chunks of it are in 3D, which is rather interesting. I love 3D and um, pretty much anything like that. Even the comics and cartoons are. Holograms would fall in the same range for me. Lenticulars, all of those do phenomenally well. Even the full-fledged comics they have in here are three-dimensional. Now, being that I bought these all real cheap in a big, huge lot, I may have five or ten cents in each one of these, so I'll do phenomenally well couple of them have some other issues. This one has a centerfold. It's in there, but it's loose. And it's not what you think when it comes to centerfold. It's uh, National Lampoon sells out. So they're basically saying they sell out. The I have to show you the centerfold in here. It is loose, as I said, but that's the centerfold. It's just basically another sellout item here. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, truthfully. Interesting. I loved these when I was a child. I bought Cracked, Mad Magazine, the whole works. Um, justice, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I mean, I thought that was just so clever in my book there. These do very well, as I said. These are 1973, 74, 75. This one's 77. Here's another interesting one that goes along with George Magazine. That's supposed to be JFK. R coming back to Run Again. This is the same basic thing that you'll see going with the George Magazine a lot of people aren't pushing this issue, but if you put JFK and, and the whole works in there, these do tend to do fairly well. This is one you'll miss. They've kind of aged JFK to look like he would in 1977. So this is a fallback from that era as well. Now we're in Terrapeak, and if you look these up in Terrapeak, you'll see that some lots of these magazines specifically, like here's 39 actual magazines of National Lampoon, went for 400 bucks. 
There's a couple single issues graded that can go for five, six hundred bucks in the right condition. There's some that'll sell for a couple hundred bucks, and there's just a few that do that, but there are some that are phenomenally well sought after. If you had 10 copies, you'd sell all 10 the first week you listed them up. So there is a lot of value in National Lampoon. You've got to market them, though. You've got to actually put some keywords. You've got to display them nicely also. Now, here is that lot of the 39, and most, I think, if not all of these issues, I actually have in my possession also. Now, these are bagged in the whole works. They don't have the labels on them. Well, actually, there is one with the label on it, so not in perfect condition, but you can see 400 bucks for this one here. Depending on the era, the age of the issues, you can do phenomenally well with just these basically common magazines. Here's just another example. A lot of 50 of them went for over $300. On the top of it as well, you'll see the most prized possession. This one's actually sought after more than issue number one because of the artwork, the, the cover itself. Let's actually look at a listing just for that one as well. Now, here is that magazine. 207 bucks. It can go for 500 or higher higher in great condition. Basically, it's telling you if you don't buy this magazine, we'll kill this dog. You can see what it says on the cover. That's usually what they highlight on this one for sale. I love this cover. It's actually pretty comical. The face and the dog is just priceless. Now, this magazine only used to sell for 40 to 70 bucks on average any day of the week. The prices have steadily climbed on National Lampoon. It's a must buy, in my opinion, based on what the tracking is of the prices. Now, one other area with this as well are the binders. I always nab these up. I've got four or five of them in-house now. These binders used to sell for 30 or 40 bucks. They're going now for $120 in good condition. It's an empty binder that the magazines would slip into. It's all there is to it, and it's actually missing a few of the inside mounts for those magazines, so it's not even a complete binder. It's still hard to come by these days. You had to order these special. I think you could actually buy a year of them in complete sets in these as well at the end of the year with their leftovers, but all of these go for some good money. The binder without anything in it is 120 bucks. Now, I buy any kind of magazine that I can think it's money. Um, one title a lot of people don't mess with is Time Magazine. Early war issues are ones with famous people on them like this. Douglas MacArthur, 1949, can do extremely well. This one probably will get me, geez, 40 bucks or so in the condition that it's in. Any of the earlier ones. Here's one from, when's this one? From 1934. Time goes back a ways. A lot of the earlier issues are worth some money. They, they do fairly well, in all honesty. Um, I've got some old Newsweek, uh, Munas Marina, I think is how it's pronounced, um, from Puerto Rico. This is an interesting one here, 1949 again. War era magazines from Newsweek and the whole works, they all do phenomenally well. Now, there are some titles that I find mixed in with National Lampoon, because National Lampoon is more back than almost the hippie culture. So I do run into certain ones, hippie is necessary. Now, this is from Bob Fitch. Now, if you look this one up on eBay, I've sold this exact same one two or three years ago at top dollar back then was 40 bucks. This is going for 75 to 100 bucks now. This is just the typical example, sit-ins, a lot of um, drug culture in the whole works. These all do phenomenally well. This is from 1967. It was published in Haight-Ashbury. So this one's going to do extremely, extremely well. There's other ones here. I've had two or three of this one. I always buy this one whenever I see it. Poster Trip. I think this is like 68 or 69, if I'm not mistaken, in this one. It's got loads of posters, and I'll show you just a couple images from it. Yeah, 1968. The back cover is really pretty neat also. These are actual covers from posters. Give you an idea there. And that's all it shows on the inside. It goes into detail on the artwork, the style. Some of it's in color. Uh, I actually have one of these in my personal collection, so this one's going to be sold as well. 40 50 bucks on a good day. It's in excellent condition. No real issues for the age of this one here. Now, I also purchased around four or 5,000 postcards. This is just a small sample of what we got. They're all early. The majority of them are U.S. There are some very nice ones in here. Just sorting through about 50 of them, I pulled out this Uncle Sam one here, which should net me a pretty darn good penny off of it. 
Now I have less than a penny in each one of these postcards across the board. Now this is something too I can sell in little lots. I can sell all from a specific city. There's a bunch in here, real photo, real picture. There's holidays. There's Christmas. There's a couple Halloween in here. So it doesn't take much when you know your stuff, when you know which postcards can sell. Even the ones that aren't worth selling on their own, I can still put them together in lots of, say, a specific area, a specific item, all flowers together. Interesting, nice greetings like something like this one here. These will all do well. This one with the eagle. I've got Art Nouveau. And these are just random assortments here. There's some really interesting ones in here. Some of these are signed by known artists. Now, these are fairly common ones here, but there are some really nice ones mixed in here. Roses do extremely well in lots. So I can put together a ton in the lots. The rest will be sold individually if I can do that. There are some phenomenal, interesting ones here. There's some series. There's some sets. There's even an installment set in this collection here, which is basically four postcards that connect together basically to make one big image. You had to buy them in installments one at a time. So postcards is another huge area where I can usually make some pretty darn good money. This is the type of investment that doesn't cost very much, that can give you a huge return over a very long time. This can be pieced out individually for the ones that are worth at least 10 bucks, and the rest will be thrown into a lot, and they will be sold that way and still garner some good money. Any that aren't worth throwing into a small lot will be thrown into a big lot and then sold out that way as well. Postcards is one of the areas that I can sell every single one of them on eBay. Every one of these postcards here will either be sold individually in a small lot of five or six from the same city, or blow them out a couple hundred or even a thousand at a time for say 150 bucks or better now we've got a ton of other paper from this purchase a ton of smalls advertising vintage and historic items and we'll be showing some of that in a patreon video that's coming up shortly more than likely i'll have another video up here showing some really interesting and unique items as well well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Uh, when can I pick up the pictures? Thursday. This Thursday. Okay, let me make a note of that. You're going to write it down there? Oh, well, it's going to, Oh, yeah. then uh, let's say Tuesday. You mean two days earlier? No, five, five days, days later. Five days later, I uh -huh. thought as much. If this customer were at a Photomat store, we'd be introducing him to our brand new picture pickup promise. Photomat's way of telling you exactly when your pictures will be ready. That quick? Sure, and if it doesn't work out, you get a free roll of film. Oh, no, 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 no. You get in trouble oh, for that. Oh, it's no I mean, problem. Yeah. Huh? It's a Photomat policy. The Photomat picture pickup promise. Is there a Photomat store around here?